In this video, we're talking about VRAM. What is it and how much do you need for video editing or motion design? Perhaps you're shooting 1080p, 4K, or even 6K. So how much VRAM do you need for those specific use cases? If you're new to the channel, you're watching the Don't Tech With Me show, where you're going to get the latest tech news and tech terms demystified. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos for creative professionals. Now, let's dive into the reason you're here, and that's talking about VRAM, Video Random Access memory or video memory for short. Is this similar to regular RAM? Yes, there are a lot of similarities. In the same way that RAM holds the processes for the computer components to fetch and make quick use of, the VRAM does the same thing for graphical processes in your computer. VRAM is the buffer between the processor of the computer and what is displayed onto the display. So let's take a look at that process. So first, the process is read. So the image is first read by the processor as data. So you're editing and the image that you're looking at on your screen has been read as data. Okay. From there, the data is written. So the image is then written to the VRAM. Then the signal is sent to the display. So data is sent via digital signal to the screen. So then you see the image that you are seeing on your screen. Finally, it is converted. Um, so the signal is converted to an image on your screen. So the signal is sent, then the signal is converted, and then you see that image. So that's what you know VRAM is doing. It's storing all that data so it doesn't have to do the long haul back and forth. It's doing that in real time. What is the difference between DDR4 and GDDR5? Well, they're completely different because DDR4 is the classification for computer RAM, whereas GDDR5 is a classification for the video RAM. So it comes in the big difference between the RAM that you put in your computer, like the 32 gigs of RAM or the 16 gigs of RAM that helps with the everyday general tasks of the computer, that's the DDR4, and the GDDR5 is the VRAM within your graphics processing unit. So don't confuse those two. Um, this is the one you're going to want to be looking for as far as GPUs are concerned. Okay, three ways that video editing utilizes VRAM. This is very important. So we have playback, rendering, and encoding. So the first one is playback, watching back the edited footage in the timeline of Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Then you have rendering, rendering motion graphics or visual elements in the software, uh, in the video editing software. Then you have encoding, that's the exporting. So when exporting out of the video, out of the video editing software, you can select hardware encoding, which will allow the GPU to support the export. Um, so there's the three specific ways that you can use VRAM or the graphics processing unit while video editing. So each of these processes will be sped up the more powerful GPU that you have. Um, the most common ones that we saw up until recently when Adobe uh, pushed their update about encoding with hardware and also DaVinci Resolve, I mean, they've been doing that for quite a while now, but encoding is the newer feature that you will see in Adobe Premiere Pro that utilizes the GPU and specifically VRAM. So how much VRAM do you need? The amount of VRAM all depends on your use case. If you're editing massive 6K projects from a red camera or doing complex motion design graphics projects at five to 10 minutes long, then you will need as much as you can get in the GPU you can afford. Uh, but if you're working on basic 1080p projects or some 4K video editing with basic transitions and overlays, you may not need as much VRAM as you might think. All right, so let's take a look here. This is the NVIDIA GeForce GPU lineup. I am most familiar with NVIDIA's lineup. Uh, I know a lot of people love AMD, uh, but for me, this is how I can understand it best uh, as I continue to uh, pursue my education in AMD GPUs. All right, so we start out with the GTX 1050, and that's actually the GPU that I use in my daily driver, my Dell XPS 15. It's on the Pascal architecture. It has 640 CUDA cores. Um, we're going to talk about CUDA cores in a future video, um, so you can check that out in the playlist. Uh, and then two gigs of VRAM and about seven gigabytes of memory speed. Then you move up to the GTX 1650. We have the Turing shaders architecture, 896 CUDA cores, four gigs of VRAM, and 
8 gigs of memory speed. GTX 1660, 1536 CUDA cores, 6 gigs of RAM, 12 gigs of memory speed. G RTX 2060, as you see, 1920, 6 gigs, 14 GPS. And then finally, the big boy, the RTX 2080 Ti, 4352 with 11 gigs of VRAM and 14 gigabytes of memory speed. Okay, what in the world does all this mean? How much do you need? Well, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so for your basic 1080p video editing, this is what I do with my computer the most. Uh, I shoot all these YouTube videos in 1080p because I don't really have the power to edit big 4K projects currently. Um, I'm upgrading my workstation to a desktop workstation soon when I plan to shoot 4K. But we can do 1080p full quality playback. It's a little bit slower in rendering uh, and exporting and entry level streaming. So you can do all those things with this GPU. You can do some live streaming, if you want to record maybe some of your video editing or playback or whatever you might do and share it with friends, so on and so forth. Now, moving up to the GTX 1650, this has the 896 CUDA cores with 4 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, uh, and you can use this for about 4K video editing at half to full quality playback in Timeline in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro, um, and then moderate rendering, exporting, and intermediate streaming. Now, this four gigs of RAM, let me make a side note here, is the same amount of RAM that you'll see in the base model of the MacBook Pro. That has the four gig uh, VRAM, um, four gigs of VRAM in that GPU. So if you're wondering like comparison, like MacBook Pro to Windows laptops, it's gonna be about the GTX 1650. Roughly, not exactly because it's a different GPU, but that's the rough estimate of it. All right, jump back in here. This is my top recommendation for a mid-tier GPU. I think this is amazing for 4K full quality playback, quick rendering, exporting, and best value to performance for streaming. This is my favorite GPU right now in the market because it's a really good average price. Um, as soon as you get up to the RTX stuff, it starts getting crazy. You still have a solid amount of CUDA cores, great amount of VRAM, um, and so it just makes a great value. Next, we move up to the RTX 2060 with the 1920 CUDA cores and 6 gigs of RAM. That'll be great for 6K full quality playback, fast rendering, exporting, and fast streaming performance. I've used this one uh, at CES. We were doing some playback with 6K footage, and it played it back super smooth. And lastly, the RTX 2080 Ti, 4352 on the CUDA cores, 11 gigs of VRAM. Basically, I can do all things amazing because I am amazing. That's what the RTX 2080 Ti says. That is a beast of a GPU. Um, honestly, the only use case I see for that for video editing is like crazy 8K red footage with rendering and you just want super fast rendering times. Um, or if you're just a crazy motion designer and you do big motion design projects. That's where I see the RTX 2080 Ti coming in because we're not, well, personally, I'm not a gamer, so I don't need to do that much graphical processing uh, as somebody who's gaming. So keep an eye on the channel discussing CUDA cores and stream processors, diving into GPU memory speed, and the ever so curious base clock and boost clock within the graphics processing units. That is what's coming up here on the Don't Tech With Me channel. Keep an eye on the channel if you're a creative professional wanting to get more videos to understand the tech behind the gear that you use. Click or tap the screen for more related videos that I think you'll find helpful to understand your gear better. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you on the next episode.